Charity of the Week. Please tell us your name and charity. I'm Catherine Bradley. I'm Chief Executive Officer of Sight Matters, which is the trading arm of Manx Blind Welfare Society, the charity. I'm Peter Marshall and I'm Marketing and Fundraising Officer at Sight Matters. How did the charity start and what is its purpose? The charity started in 1937 under a statute of Tinwald from 1936. So there's a legal requirement to have services that provide welfare and support for the blind of the Isle of Man. So that's our history and our background, so we're actually defined legislatively. So we now provide support services for the blind and visually impaired. I think the big difference is the services aren't just for the blind. They are for people who have any kind of visual impairment so you don't have to be registered as blind or partially sighted and so we have a huge spectrum of people that we provide services to so we changed our name two years ago and that was to reflect that so we, we it's not that we just cater for blind people it's actually visually impaired people too so sight matters hopefully covers more people uh, which is the idea really behind the rebrand tell us about your team So we've part-time staff, we've full-time staff and a huge number of volunteers that allow us to provide the services. We provide outreach support, we have lunch clubs, we provide technology, we offer advice and assistance to um, other departments, other services around accessibility. We have, as you're aware, the Talking News service, we have a massive audio library Um, We've got our VIP store in the street if anybody's out and about and wishes to avail themselves of an environmentally friendly approach to purchasing clothing. But predominantly, if we can support somebody, then we will do it and we make it in their best interests and what they require rather than this is the service that we have, this is what you can have. It is if this is what you need, we will endeavour to provide it. And one of our developing, or two of our developing areas actually, are around the younger members, because we have an increasing number of younger members with sight impairment, and catering for those between 18 and sort of 65, and seeing the changes and the impact for the younger members has been Um, amazing and we've seen a not only a significant number of referrals we've seen a significant number of people actively engaging with the social interaction services that we actually provide which other organizations do you work with We'll work with anybody that will work with us um, because whilst we deal predominantly clearly with sight impairment, people have other issues and we we can't do it on our own. So we work with the statutory services, um, particularly the wellbeing partnerships, which we have an exceptionally good relationship with, the long-term care coordinators through Manx, Manx Care and other Manx Care departments. But within the third sector, particularly the Stroke Association, Alzheimer's Society, Live at Home, there's others that we do work with depending upon circumstances. Most of our referrals are for people over 65 and they may have other health, other health conditions. So the two, the two interconnect. Our um, headquarters at Current Court is used by a lot of other, th- well, some third sector organisations. The so Samaritans will do their training there. Um, and in the Freedom Field, which is our new sensory garden space, behind Current Court, um, we've had events with Manx Wildlife Trust. Mm-hmm. And the school, Birmingham School, use that facility too, as does the, the old folk home next door as well. So it's not just third sector organisations. It is a kind of a fairly wide um, type of different organisations we work with. What are your main goals? Um, well, last year, the year before, we had we created a new five-year strategy document called Moving Forward, and that outlines our vision for the next five years. I think the biggest things in there are independent yet, so supporting our members to lead the most independent lives that they can, really. Um, so that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, depending on what their require- their needs are. Um, But it can be as simple as we can provide them with a bit of technology, sometimes a really simple bit of technology, but it can be life changing for them. Um, And just having us uh, us as a point of access to that technology can be really helpful. We 
um, Dave, a member of our team, has a, a lot of expert knowledge around what is available and hooking people up with the things that they need um, to lead the most independent lives that they can. But it can also be just be emotional support. So um, recently we've started a new session called You Matters course called You Matters Course. Um, and that's for people who are newly diagnosed or um, struggling with issues around sight loss. Just to, uh, I mean, it's a very difficult thing to be diagnosed with and having a place to go and to learn with experts on our team, but also with other people experiencing those issues can be very helpful. So, yeah, that's a big part of what we're looking to do is just ensure that people are able to lead independent lives um, and where people may have lost some independence. If we're able to give them that back, then we will do everything we can do. We find when people lose their sight, it does one of the biggest issues for them is that loss of independence and what that can mean and it can be catastrophic it is life-changing and that then affects uh, mental health it affects confidence it affects social interaction so whilst we have our moving forward document with our vision and independence empowerment you know a fiscally stable and financially stable organization the primary focus from an operational perspective has to be supporting people with that independence and we do find that the simplest things can be life-changing for people and and then depending upon their circumstances there can be a whole range of other supportive measures which might be technology it might be assistive equipment it might be confidence building and it might be coming to lunch club once a week how do you see the charity developing over the next five years there won't be any changes although you know as new in role it'll be about building on the the foundations that we already have and as I've, I've touched on like many other charities and statutory services we are conscious of the financial and the fiscal situation so for us having being fiscally stable um, is important to allow us to carry on delivering the services that we do currently because we are in a privileged position because our services are free at the point of delivery Um, and I think we're probably one of a very few charities that actually provide that so we don't differentiate or discriminate depending upon the person's circumstances or um, financial position that they're in it's important that we have that because without that we can't not just continue delivering the services we have but progress and develop the services that we have so that we can offer wider ranges to more younger people we can offer more to those over 18s because we are really really seeing the benefit of what we've done over the last the last 18 months i always say if it ain't broke don't fix it it's not broken it doesn't need fixing in any way shape or form the analogy i always give is we've got the foundations now of the house i'm here to put the first course of brick on how is the charity funded we're financially independent so that i'm I'm, what i mean by that is um we're responsible for raising all of our own funds and we do that in a variety of different ways We have people in the community who will do sponsored events for us, and that's a great way to support us if you are looking to support us. We've had some people do the Great Manx Run last year. Um, Rowney Golf Club chose us as their charity of the year. And help like that is crucial, really, for us to continue operating. We, you can also donate to us directly via our website or by giving us a phone, uh, giving us a call. There's information to do that. Well, splashed around on all of our stuff. <laughs> but we also um, we apply to trusts and foundations to try and get to finance some of our bigger projects. So, and we look for corporate sponsorship too for things like the Freedom Field that we've opened um, recently. How can people support you? It's a tricky time at the moment. It's a cost of living crisis, and it's difficult for for lots of charities. Um, and as Catherine was saying, it's really important that we're able to continue delivering the services that we do. So it is very important that we're able to raise raise funds. So if you are looking to support us, I'd say please um, just go on our website and find some information there. Peter's obviously covered the sort of the financial side. Um, but if I can maybe just flip that a little bit, this, the other side is the huge amount of support that we get from our volunteers and our service would not run without our volunteers. So as an example, in January alone, bearing in mind we kind of lost a, a week with the snow, um, we had over a thousand volunteer hours delivered by 79 volunteers 
in a whole range from driving minibuses to lunch club assistants to reading the news to being librarians to supporting activities. So if people aren't in a position to financially donate and we fully understand that they may not be but actually you want to do something rewarding and put something back into the community please come and speak to us about our our volunteering opportunities and the other side from businesses and you know we've been very lucky some have provided um, us corporate sponsorship they've offered us to be their charity of the year etc etc but actually we can support businesses who may have staff members who have a visual impairment because we have access and knowledge about the the technology that they may need to make a reasonable adjustment to keep somebody a valuable member of staff in the workplace. And as an example, only yesterday we were installing software for somebody in their workplace, which we met the cost of, and the licensing agreements, which helps them no end. As an individual, but also as an employer, it keeps that valued member of staff with a huge amount of skills in the workplace and we also provide visual impairment awareness training it's free of charge so just having an understanding of what it may be like if you have a staff member you have a family member um, you, you encounter somebody in the shops or in public what it might mean to have a visual impairment where can people find out more anybody is always welcome to come and see our center meet our team see what we do we're very open and receptive to any kind of interaction And if you wish to make a referral, it's simple. Call us on our office number 674727 or send us an email. And as long as you've got consent or you're the individual, we'll pick it up and we'll run with it. The Charity of the Week. Profile complete.